So the Urgot update has finally been revealed and has hit live. You can find links and videos to it. I'll put a link to Surrender at 20's post in the description down below. But as well as showing the videos, I will also now explain kind of what each ability does to get an idea maybe of what you saw and then putting some words to it. So as passive, for example, is called Echoing Flames. Attacking in the direction of one of Urgot's legs causes that leg to combust flames outward dealing physical damage to enemies in a cone and putting that leg on cooldown. Consecutive hits within a few seconds deal reduced damage. Pretty much the whole rumor that he had shotgun knees, these are the shotgun knees. This is pretty much the shotgun knees and what they do. His Q, meanwhile, is still the corrosive charge, but it's been changed a little bit. It fires an explosive charge at a target location, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies and slowing them. Enemy champion struck are locked onto. So that's kind of like the uh, corrosive charge, how it kind of was before. Um, it's now on the Q instead of the E, like it kind of was before as well. But it's pretty much the same thing. You throw like the uh, poison bomb, and then people who are hit by it, they're locked onto for his following abilities. For example, his W, which is purge now. Pretty much, Urgot shields himself and rapidly shoots the nearest enemy, prioritizing enemies that are locked onto and triggering echoing flames as passive when possible. While shooting, Urgot walks more slowly but becomes resistant to incoming slows. During this time, Urgot can walk over non-champions and cannot basic attack normally. Basically, he still has the shield that I used to get from the W. It doesn't say that it scales more with mana or anything like that. But remember, this is kind of like the first Juggernaut AD carry. Now, granted, he might not be played in the AD carry role when this rework hits live, but that was the concept that I predicted a while ago, concept they confirmed a couple weeks ago, and now we're seeing it come to light. So he will be moving a lot slower. I believe the movement speed they mentioned that he'll be moving as slow as 300 move speed when using like this ability. He'll be somewhat stationary, but if he's right in range of somebody, like a melee champion, He'll be able to just absolutely put the pain on them, which is kind of the point of this ability and this rework in general. Something kind of new and experimental to try out. We'll see how people like it or don't like it. Moving on to the E, it's called Disdain. Urgot charges in a direction. If he runs into an enemy champion, he'll stop grabbing them and throwing them on the other side of him, damaging them and locking onto them. Non-champions trampled during Urgot's charge take the same damage and are also knocked aside. So pretty much think about this if it was Singe's fling but with a dash on it. That'd probably be the simplest way as well as the video to describe it. Uh, furthermore, um, some people are like, well, Juggernauts aren't supposed to have, you know, gap closers and things like that. Well, if you look at Garen, for example, his Q can speed him up. It's not like the best speed up ability in the game, but it is some mobility, right? Darius, while he can't speed up, he does have the hook. So it's not unlikely for a Juggernaut to have an ability like this in it. I will be kind of interested to see how it works when it hits live, or the PBE for that matter, even if people really think it's actually okay and acceptable, given he's supposed to fill the Juggernaut space. Now, the one that really has a lot of people talking, though, is the Ultimate. Which is called Fear Beyond Death. Pretty much, Urgot fires a hex drill beacon that impales the first enemy champion struck, locking onto them, dealing physical damage, and slowing them. While impaled, if the target falls below a certain health threshold, Urgot may recast Fear Beyond Death to suppress the target, slowly reeling them in, and when they reach him, executing them. During the recast, they are untargetable, and this effect can only be ended by killing Urgot. If Urgot successfully executes an enemy, he terrifies all nearby enemies. This will be an interesting one to see. This is the whole meat grinder from the, le from the leak idea that they were talking about, in which case, pretty much if you have more than 25% health and he hits you with this ability, it's going to slow you, it's going to lock onto you, so then of course his other abilities can also take effect and be used as well, but the meat grinder part won't come into effect unless you're below 25 health, in which case it'll pretty much shoot these chains out to you, drag you to Urgot, and then you'll be executed. Pretty much falling below 25% health when he has this ability means death. You will die. He will use this ability on you and you'll. that's just it. Now what I don't know off right now is 
if that 25% threshold is for a certain amount of health, is for squish your targets and like tank your targets, it won't matter. Or if it's 25% health flat. One of the things we do know though is that locking on and using the second ability if you are below 25% health is global. If Urgot fires this at a Shin, for example, and he teleports away to go help a teammate at sub 25% health, this thing will grab Shin globally and reel it back to Urgot, and then he will die. Unless, of course, you kill Urgot, that's the counterplay. If you kill Urgot, you'll, you know, if your teammate gets caught, he's gonna get killed by this thing, and you all just focus your attention on Urgot and kill him, it'll end the effect. So that is pretty much the Urgot rework in a nutshell. Once it hits the PBE, I will do a video with some gameplay of what playing as Urgot is like on the PBE. Um, some closing thoughts just really quick. As someone, I also put like the splash arts up really quick um, while I do the closing arts. The Battlecast one is probably my favorite one because I really like that skin. I really like what they did with the Battlecast skin in this rework. As someone that liked the old Urgot actually and didn't really see the need for a rework to be honest, I will miss the old Urgot, but this does look pretty cool. You know, one of my complaints with Galio though was Galio after the rework, while it might have been fun to play, did seem like a different champion. It didn't really seem like the old Galio. Old Galio seemed to truly die, unlike other reworks where the champion might have been preserved. I'm kind of getting this feeling about this rework as well as old Urgot, it looks like he's kind of dead. You know, one of the staples of Ur old Urgot was the ultimate, the switching places and all that stuff, which is now kind of gone. It's replaced with something new. It's not that it's terrible. I'm not saying it's terrible or anything like that. I just feel like in terms of feeling like old Urgot, so far from what I've seen, this does not feel like old Urgot. It does seem like it'll be cool, and if this champion can be played in the top lane, for example, as someone who played a bunch of Urgot already, um, I got one more champion I can add to one of my weakest roles in the lane. So I'm not complaining in any means at all in those aspects, but I am saying, I guess it's a little bit bittersweet. I will miss old Urgot, unlike other champions where I didn't really miss their old versions. Um, this will be one of the first times I will. So with all that said, I will end this video here. It is already a bit too long. Sorry about that. Um, Thank you for watching this video this far, if you did. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, I will also be playing Urgot on the PBE when he's released on the PBE and having a follow-up video with specific what it looks like in-game to play against whatever I play against on the PBE when that time comes. So thank you for watching this video. I don't know which video will be next because life will be quite a mess. So until next time, take care from the Fire Godai FS.